Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany, Turkey, or Japan, but you cannot become a German, or Turk, or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi weekly talk show program featuring the life of immigrants, diversity, and inclusion. Created by Think Tank Hawaii and the Kingsfield Law Office. We invite renowned immigrants to come to the show to talk about their life stories, immigration adventures, and their contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is Professor Zhuang Yi Liu from University of Minnesota. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Professor. We know each other for many, many years. And uh, I always a pleasure to working with you and starting the uh, World Education Expo in 2005, I believe, and in Beijing. Now I'm both of us uh, serve on the U of M China Center board. You are the board chair. And I really uh, appreciate your leadership. And uh, I'm going to read it, your short bio to our audience. You, Professor Liu received his undergraduate degree from Fudan University, the top university in Shanghai, China, and master's and doctorate degrees in mathematics from Virginia Tech in the United States. Professor Liu now is a professor at the Department of Mathematics, Swenson School of Science and Engineering, University of Minnesota, Duluth. Professor Liu is also the chair of the University of Minnesota China Center board. Professor Liu's research interests include, I'm going to try my best here, <laughs> optimal control theory, differential equations, approximation, and parameter identification. I have no idea what are they, but obviously they are important in the re research areas. Professor, I want to ask you, uh, the first question I want to ask you is from your bio. You graduated from Fudan University in 1982, which means you were admitted into college in 1978. That from the uh, resume, non-Chinese probably will not comprehend how significant that is. But all Chinese, when, you, when we look at your resume, we are super impressed because that means you are a member of Chiba Ban. Uh, Chiba means 78, you entered the college in 78. Why this is important and significant and because you are the best of the best, the elite of the elites of Chinese intellectuals and educated class. Why we say that? Because from 1966 to 1978, Chinese colleges basically completely shut down. And but Chinese colleges and universities reopened in 1978. And you can think about it, 12 years of talent have been accumulated have been waiting for this opportunity. So the college admission was extremely brutal and highly competitive. It's like one to a, a thousand ratio, something like that. But you were admitted to the very best university in Shanghai, China. So congratulations, a very late congratulations. But I do want to ask you your college uh, experience and how you get into college and anything you would like to share about that period. Yes, uh, I am. I was one of the lucky one and uh, to get into the college. At that one. Uh, this is the cultural revolution ended in 1976 after Mao's death, and uh, then that we start a new era, and uh, there are hundreds of things are waiting to be done. And one of the things is to restoration of the university. Uh, because there are 10 years, there are no the college admitting, admissions. So uh, I remember that it was in 1977, the spring of 1977, and Deng Xiaoping 
us invited actually a group of senior scientists and professors and uh, to Beijing to have a, a meeting with them and ask them what the country should do, what the government should do for the education system. And the, the suggestion, many uh, professors and uh, scientists suggest the restoration of the college entrance exam to start yep. the <laughs> to get the new student into the university as soon as possible. Well, usually in China, it's uh, just like here, and uh, the new students start from September, the fall semester. But at that time, it's already like a June. It's too late mm. to start the new, uh, the, to give the college entrance exam and then admit the student into university and for the fall semester. Then they decided, okay, let's do it in the spring. That is abnormal. You start a new school year in the spring, that's the spring semester, 1978, February. Mm. So in 1977, I was a construction worker. You know, when I left the school in 1971, I was sent to a the island in the farm in the island, which is um, uh, I think it's at the Yangtze Delta. It's called the Chongqing Island. I was a farmer for three years there, and then uh, they say, "Okay, your re-education by the parents was done." Then they assign me back to the city, the Shanghai city. I become a construction worker. Whoa for another three years. And uh, during that time, I would uh, prepare myself, actually, to become my hobby. I would uh, I love mathematics a lot. I, so I taught myself in what I did not learn in school because uh, from my seventh grade to 10th grade, I only stayed in school for four years. Then I was assigned to the farm. So we did not learn much. Actually, what I I remember that the only thing that for the mathematics part, I only learned so far right now is the seventh grade mathematics. So I actually, when I was in the farm and when I become, was a construction worker, I self-taught myself. It's just for hobby. But I always have a dream. I say someday, and maybe the revolution ends, and then if we open the university, I can get into the university and they become a student there. Yeah. Well, the good news comes in 1977. Mm -hmm. So when they announced that news, saying that uh, they will reopen the university, uh, I took one month off from my work and to review, to prepare for the exam. And with one of my neighbor and my best friends, and we worked together for like one month and to prepare for the exams. So uh, after taking the exam, I think, well, I think I itself, uh, I feel pretty good when I <laughs> took the exam. I think, oh, I, I the, especially the math part, I, I think I did pretty well. And then you can select which university you want to go. So my choice at that time was uh, you fill a form, say, oh, what is your first choice? What is the second choice? And then according to your score and the university will admit you or not, they, they make decisions. So uh, according to my math score, uh, at that time, the best Strong, I should say, strongest math program in China is Beijing University and Fudan University. But that year, Beijing University math program was not ready. They did not start the, to recruit students. So the only choice is Fudan University. So that's my only choice. I feel Fudan University, I did not choose any other. Absolutely the best. Good choice. And, uh, Fortunately, 
and the, the good news comes. And uh, one day in my mailbox, I received a letter saying that you are admitted to Fudan University. I was so excited. Well, Professor, you, I just uh, amazed by your uh, humbleness and you, uh, you see this story with such a, a moderacy, uh, it's almost lighthearted. But uh, when I hear your story, there is a big throat, in, a big lump in my throat. I couldn't imagine you know, three years as a construction worker and before that years in in uh, in the the farmland, and uh, and which you after you and your generation absolutely deserve the best education. And uh, you, I I agree, you uh, you are the lucky one. You waited and uh, even you uh, you endured so much. The pain and the suffering, but you 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 endured and you waited for your turn, and you thrived. Uh, and also remind me the story of other you know intellectuals of humanities when they work in the farm for a day, then return retire to their slum. They read and memorize Shakespeare, and the same story. And you taught yourself math, the most beautiful language. Uh, certainly, yeah, because I think I'm just, uh, I was one step ahead of many others. And uh, in some way, I'm uh, better prepared. And I know that that year, 5.7 million students took the college entrance exam, and wow. they only admitted 270,000 students. So the admission rate is like... Uh, Four point some percent. In my high school class, fifty students, I was the only one got into college. In my the the farm, when I you remember that I went to farm, we have like a a, a team of one hundred fifty people, young people at the same age. Mm -hmm. I was the only one to got into college that year. So yeah, it, it was difficult, but uh, I think. Uh, the reason I was able to get in is just because I one step ahead of others. Professor, you're too hum uh, humble. You are the uh, the best. You are the best. There's no doubt about it. Everybody were prepared. The five point seven million, you know, applicants, all of them were prepared. Everybody studied hard, want to wanted to get into the college after this 10, 12 years wait, and absolutely you were the you you were the best you know applicants, and and how big was your class at Fudan University, your department? Math department in that year admitted a hundred sixty students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more, pretty moderate, not too big. We, have, we had four classes, and two in mathematics, and one in computational mathematics, and the other one in theoretical mechanics. Well, it's uh, it, it, it's just uh, amazing. You have you know after all these years, you you could have the opportunity to sit in a classroom at a Fudan University, very elite university in China, and study math. You must really really happy. And how was uh? I will be curious because of the Chibaban, the class of eighty two, and all of them, all of you are elite of elites of the elites. And uh, you either uh, very accomplished scholar, professors, and uh, or in the government, or maybe studied uh, uh, abroad. So, uh, do you have contact with your college uh, classmates? Do you know uh, what they do now? Yes, and we do have close contact. Uh, in yeah, two thousand fifteen. Oh, my class had forty students, and uh, we had. A class reunion in and the United States or in China? In, in Fudan University. <laughs> oh, Fudan University. So yeah. most of your classmates actually uh, are still in China, or most of them are uh, in my class. One quarter of them is in the United States. 
One quarter. Yeah, ten per the, the ten students are in the United States. The, the other class, the, the, our class is uh, well, uh, the because in that year the students enter the college, the age difference is so big. Oh the yeah, yeah sure. Like the fifteen, the oldest is about the thirty or thirty one. So when they divide us into classes, my class is uh, we the age age is a little bit older, so. I was 24, the youngest in my class was 23. Mm. Other class have most of the younger kids. Young kids. I see. Yeah. And uh, for that class, actually, most of them I studied abroad. I was studied abroad. And uh, I think the most of them in the United States, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, we want you all. We want the best of the best. Uh, On my class, the students, uh, most of them, if they stay in China, for those stay in China, they become college professors, most of them. Oh, I, I, I think the reason is uh, after 10 years at the closing of university and uh, there is a lack of university teachers. Mm. So after we graduated, most of them stay there and uh, assign a job in university, become a teacher, become a, a professor later. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. And and when I went to college in 1991, and my uh, my high school friends, many of them went to Peking University. Uh, uh, I didn't uh, uh, go to Peking University for college, only for graduate school. But uh, I think last year uh, they had their college, uh, their the class reunion, and uh, I think except one, er, er, the entire class are in the United States. Oh. <laughs> but I think it's biology. The part of uh, is is is, is or the biology class. Uh, the one, at least one class, the entire class are in the United States. Except one one student, it's just um, amazing to to see that you know the the uh, the cultural you know interdependency and uh, how the Chinese can thrive in, in the United States. Now I I think I'm having one of the best oral history interview on this program. I really appreciate you, Professor Liu, to share with your life experience. Uh, now we have to move on to your the second chapter of your 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 CV is how did you get to the United States, and uh, <laughs> you just, you graduated from Fudan and you immediately applied for Virginia Tech. Yeah, the the reason I applied to Virginia Tech actually started from nineteen eighty one. Uh, one of the remember that the, the one my neighbor one my best friend we studied together prepared for the college entrance exam and he is a physics major hmm. in 1981 uh the nobel prize winner professor Zheng dao li from columbia oh, yeah 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 Zheng dao li, yes. he initiated a program in physics called the cuspy program and which select a hundred top Felix students from China mm. and uh, enroll them in the United States the universities to the PhD program in Felix. So my friend was selected. So he went to Virginia Tech in 1981. And then he gave me a lot of information about Virginia Tech, about how to study, in the United States, because at that time, the information about the, the U.S. Is, is it's very, very rare. And we really don't know much about the universities and the lives in the United States. So my friend wrote to me and he said, yeah, you can come and you can apply to the math department. There's no Chinese students there. And you can apply and you can apply for scholarship like a teaching assistantship or research assistantship, so that uh, because at that time we, we cannot afford uh, to pay tuition. So I said, oh, great. Then just send me, ask them, send me the 
uh, application form, so I applied. Then in 1981, the about December, I received the admission letter from Virginia Tech, and which they offered me a scholarship. However, <laughs> I was not able to uh, enter the program. The reason is uh, the government already assigned us because we we are when we go to university, everything was provided. All the like uh, uh, education, you don't pay tuition fee, you don't pay the uh, dorm fee, and so everything provided by the government. So now they say, okay, you are uh, in our plan to assign to you to a job, assign you to a job. Mm -hmm. Once you get, are in that plan, you cannot leave. You have to serve for the country for two years. When I say so, you have to work for two years mm -hmm. before you can leave. So I wrote back to Virginia Tech and said, I'm sorry, I cannot come because of that policy. Well, it's so nice of them. They renewed my admission and a scholarship every year for two years. Wow. So uh, until 1984, then I finally did, <laughs> completed the two years <laughs> work requirement. And then, <laughs> so okay. I went to Virginia Tech. The professor there, the, the director of the graduate study, the first thing he said to me, finally, finally, you come. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you come. But at that time, I was the first Chinese students from mainland of China to the Virginia Tech's math department. Wow, historic. Well, Professor, you uh, again, you said you said this is such a, a light tune, but we all know how difficult it was. That means you had very high level of English proficiency. Well, you know, Chinese college uh, studying math. Otherwise, they wouldn't admit you. And second, your GPA must be the, the 4.0 and the highest possible in order for them to award you uh, a tuition waiver and a scholarship. And you must be the best of the best. Otherwise, they wouldn't wait for two more years just to admit this particular student. So. Virginia made the right choice, and we made the right choice to uh, to have you here at the U of M. But uh, I just remind me, I went came to the United States in two thousand, and uh, I had my undergraduate education, undergraduate uh, education in China, total seven years, and I got uh, the same the tuition free. Uh, and and a very a tiny stipend, uh, but anyway, basically, I ha have the seven years of uh, free education in China. But when I wanted to study abroad, a different story. They didn't want me to work because there's no uh, job, you know, assigned job already waiting for you. It's a, they uh, they just said pay the tuition back. So I paid seven years of tuition and the stipend back to the education authority and then was allowed to study abroad. However, here's a little dramatic twist. Many years later, the people who was in charge of uh, charging these study abroad students, this uh, fee was arrested. Because obviously the money didn't go to the, the the treasury instead of go to somewhere else. So it's uh -huh. it's a, 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 a sorry I digress, but I couldn't help it just remind me. Uh, but I'm glad you had two years in China and came to the United States without the further uh, obstacles. Yeah, when I first came, I remember at that, that time the. Uh, current exchange rate is one dollar to two renminbi, oh. and uh, you are only allowed to exchange sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. So I came to the United States with sixty dollars in my pocket. Whoa. I arrived New York, the Kennedy Airport, and I 
took a taxi. I want uh, send me to uh, Queens, and one of my friends lived there. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I uh, took the Greyhound bus from New York to uh, Blacksburg, in Virginia. But with that sixty dollars at the airport, the taxi driver say. Uh, they say, okay, we, I give them the address. They say, okay, we can drive you. Uh, how much money do you have? I, say, I thought about it. I said, $40. Oh, say. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> they say, yeah, give me the $40. I, drove, I would drive the <laughs> I, I <laughs> think that, that yeah. was, that was uh, 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 overcharged, wasn't it? It, at that time, it was overcharged. Yeah, definitely overcharged. <laughs> it's a completely new experience for me. I <laughs> fortunately I still had kept the twenty dollars in my pocket. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the the New York didn't give you a, a very <laughs> very very good welcome. Well, it's uh, amazing. We you know our program goes so fast because we we should double the length of our, our program. But uh, before we go, I do want to ask you at least we only we won't only get a chance to cover like ten percent of our our questions. But I do want to ask you, even we only have less than two minutes left. Why math? What do you find about so fascinating about math? Math. Why you think math is uh, you want to commit your entire life to math studies, teaching, and research? Uh, first, is uh, when I was an elementary school student, uh, my math skill is uh, pretty good. I think maybe because of my mother, the elementary school math teacher. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And I inherited a little bit all of that. <laughs> uh, that makes- yeah, I was the class uh, representative for the math part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after that, uh, when I was assigned to the farm, I want to keep studying uh, because we didn't learn, learn much knowledge in, in the, my high school or middle school to high school that we didn't learn much, actually. So I thought, okay, I, I want to know more. So that's kind of saying you want you really want to uh, learn the knowledges, and uh, you don't want to just to be a farmer forever. <laughs> so, uh, what do you can learn? But at that time, you cannot self study chemistry because you need experiments to experiments. Yeah. Physics, chemistry, these all you need to do experiments and so. So that's another reason that the mm. mathematics is the thing. You only need a, a paper, a piece of paper, and a pad. You can study by yourself. So I kept going uh, in the math direction. Okay. Uh, well, you by because you learn more and more, and uh, you really find okay. You really love. I really love the mathematics part. So that that is why that I picked that direction. <laughs> you are the uh, a natural born mathematician. You feel uh, natural, oh, oh, you know. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you, you, you know, people, other people might find that a, a a piece of paper and a pencil that they cannot produce anything, but you produce uh, mathematical equations and uh, uh, and make it a beautiful language. But I have to say that you are fitting the, Professor, you're fitting the t- stereotype in the United States. So you are model city, model immigrant, and also you're good at math. So that's just a, a double confirmation of the stereotype. You uh, know, that uh, I was not the, uh, Really, best student in my college class. I, I was okay, but many of my classmates are really smart. <laughs> I was intimidated a lot about that. <laughs> you were well, five point seven million, the best at the very top of the pyramid. You you are uh, already in the elite club. Well, I'm so fortunate we we run out of time. But what an amazing conversation, Professor Liu. I learned so much from this conversation. I hope we will invite you to come back to the program and we will continue to talk about the mathematics. I really yeah, very much look forward. I, I hope there's a lot of stories about uh, 
uh, the way to lead to me to United States and uh, how to become the immigrant. And so, <laughs> yeah, we can chat later. <laughs> Absolutely. Look forward to it. Thank you, Professor. What, what, what a throw. Thank you for your time. Aloha. <laughs>